The Story of the Treasure Seekers is a beloved children's adventure novel penned by Edith Nesbitt. Originally published in 1899, this book chronicles the escapades of a group of siblings determined to restore their family's fortune after their father's business downfall. As the first installment in the Bastable Children series, it stands as Nesbitt's most renowned work. With an impressive repertoire of over 60 books, Nesbitt established herself as a highly acclaimed children's author. Prior to her foray into children's literature, she supported her dearest friend through the sale of sentimental poetry. Beyond her writing endeavors, Nesbitt was an enthusiastic political activist, aligned with the modern-day British Labour Party. Set in England circa 1899, the story of the treasure seekers unfolds in the lives of the middle-class Bastable family. Residing in a modest, semi-detached house on London's Lewisham Road, the family of six grapples with the constraints of their limited space and meager finances. New clothing is a rarity, and most of their possessions are hand-me-downs from previous generations. Several years prior, Mrs. Bastable passed away, leaving Mr. Bastable to single-handedly raise their children amidst the pressures of a failing business. Overwhelmed and lacking in affection, he longs for his wife's presence, fully aware of his children's need for their mother's nurturing. Assuming a motherly role, Dora, the eldest Bastable sibling, endeavors to care for her younger brothers and sisters. The story unfolds as the siblings gather for a meeting, discussing their father's business partner and the crimes he committed that led to the family's misfortune. With stolen funds, their father could no longer afford their education, prompting his decision to withdraw all the children from school, believing it to be fairer than allowing only some of them to continue attending classes. Their father's financial struggles have reached a point where even affording the housekeeper, Eliza, becomes a challenge. Dora is left pondering how she will manage on her own. The siblings, driven by good intentions, are determined to assist their father in reclaiming his lost fortune. However, their ideas for achieving this goal diverge greatly and lack practicality. Their immediate concern revolves around reinstating their allowances, as without pocket money, they are unable to indulge in sweets or other enjoyable items. Securing their allowances becomes their primary objective, envisioning it as the foundation for future endeavors and increased profits. Their initial plan involves digging in the garden, in search of buried treasure. However, the laborious task yields no valuable findings. Desperate, they resort to using an umbrella as a makeshift divining rod, but their efforts prove fruitless. Undeterred, they regroup to devise a new strategy. Noel, the youngest among them, possesses a talent for writing and believes he can sell his poems for substantial sums. Unfortunately, his aspirations fail to materialize, as no one shows interest in purchasing his work. The remaining siblings contemplate their own skills and strengths. Dickie, with a penchant for numbers, decides to establish his own business, intending to sell mail-order wine. However, due to their young age, they are unable to procure any wine for sale, rendering their plans futile and short-lived undeterred, the siblings embark on a new endeavor, aspiring to become detectives. They are enticed by the idea of solving crimes and unraveling mysteries. Searching for advertisements offering rewards for locating missing persons or stolen jewelry, they wander through town eagerly seeking peculiar occurrences to investigate. Unfortunately, their efforts are met with disappointment, as the town proves uneventful, lacking any opportunities for detective missions. The series of failed ventures leaves them disheartened, their spirits dwindling. I in the midst of their disappointment, they attempt once more to dig for treasure, this time unearthing four shillings. Dickie suggests utilizing the money to apply for jobs in newspapers, but the siblings opt to divide the funds among themselves, squandering it on frivolous indulgences. Their pursuit of restoring the family fortune feels increasingly futile, and the siblings come to the realization of the impossible task they have undertaken. Given the circumstances, spending the acquired money on luxuries seems like a tempting proposition. In a chance encounter, Noel crosses paths with a minor princess in Greenwich Park. However, due to his commoner status, she remains reticent and distant. Noel daydreams about being older and proposing to the princess, envisioning the wealth he could inherit through marriage. While the other siblings recognize the absurdity of his idea, they refrain from shattering his fleeting hopefulness, understanding the importance of maintaining his optimism. As their desperation grows, they entertain a drastic plan to ransom off their bothersome neighbor, Albert next door. 
However, Albert's family also grapples with financial difficulties, leaving them with limited resources to offer as ransom. Eventually, Albert's uncle contributes a few shillings, and after enduring hours of his incessant complaining, they release Albert and bid him farewell. With limited options remaining, they decide to give the divining rod another try. Alice, Noel's twin, assumes the role of a high priestess, adorned in costume, brandishing the umbrella as a mystical tool, and directing its path towards various objects. However, before they can stumble upon anything valuable, their uncle pays them a visit, offering the long-awaited opportunity they had been yearning for. He comes to their financial rescue and extends the offer for them to reside in his lavish mansion. As a result, their business flourishes once again, prompting Alice to firmly believe that she bears responsibility for their newfound success. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.